Hello everyone, Arkandy here. This week, new things were announced for Pokemon in the Pokemon Day. Among game updates and a sneak peek at future DLC, we got two new Paradox Pokemon, Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. Effective immediately, these two Pokemon are now available to catch in-game through event raids. Surprisingly, they're only 5-star raids and not 7-star, but perhaps that is for the best. Walking Wake is easy enough, but Iron Leaves is very challenging. So, let's see what these bosses can do and how to beat them. Let's start with Water Terra, Walking Wake strats. Walking Wake has Hydro Steam, Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower and Noble Roar. Hydro Steam is a new signature water type move. Its damage is boosted in the sun rather than reduced. Before anyone can act, Walking Wake will use Sunny Day to activate its ability. Wake selects random moves, not necessarily the most effective move against your Pokemon. Every now and then, it will move out a turn and target someone at random with the signature move Hydro Steam. At 50% HP, the Terra Shield activates, followed by a Terra Orb Steal and a reset to the boss's own stats. At 25% HP, the player's stats are cleared. This raid boss is very easy to beat. Electric types are the most obvious counter picks. Some grass types, though weak to flamethrower, might still work. The two builds I'll show you are special attackers so that they don't have to worry about the potential flamethrower burn. Maridon is an obvious pick against almost any water terra. Yes, in this raid it may have to tank a super effective Dragon Pulse, but that's not really a problem. The EVs don't actually matter too much. Full HP and special attack investment keeps Maridon flexible for other raids, but as long as you have 252 special attack EVs, anything should work. Clear Amulet prevents Noble Roar from lowering stats. With this Maridon build, you can set up for a guaranteed one-hit KO and there are two ways to go about it. The first you use Charge, Calm Mind and Attack Cheer. Charge doubles the damage of your next electric type move and raises your special defense. This gives you a lot of bulk and always guarantees a one-hit KO with Electro Drift. The second one you use Charge and Metal Sound. That's it. It's one turn faster. However, Metal Sound has 85% accuracy. I personally prefer the Calm Mind approach since it's more reliable and have replaced Metal Sound with Parabolic Charge. This is probably not necessary in solos, but may be handy if you do online raids. Rotom Wash is the perfect budget pick for this raid if you don't have Meridon. It's got the bulk and the damage. Full investment in HP and special attack is good and keeps your Rotom flexible for other raids. Optionally, you can put 12 EVs in speed. Even with the modest nature, you outspeed max speed walking wake. It's not mandatory, but it's nice to have. Clear Amulet prevents stat drops from Noble Roar. Start with Charge, 3 Nasty Plots, 1 Attack Cheer, and that's enough to 1 hit KO with Thunderbolt. Really, the raid should end in turn 6, except if your NPCs somehow activate the shield, which hasn't happened to me while testing. For the fourth slot, you can fill in Light Screen, Eerie Impulse, or Rain Dance. If you're going Rain Dance, you could do an alternate build with Rain Dance and Thunder instead of Thunderbolt. Rain Dance cancels out Protosynthesis, although you already have a plus one special defense stage thanks to Charge. This strategy lines up the last turn of Rain Dance with the turn you use Thunder. This takes 6 turns too, and is slightly safer, but in the same 6 turns, the final damage dealt by Thunderbolt is actually higher than Thunder. You can certainly choose your preferred strategy, but I think Thunderbolt is more flexible. Next, we have Psychic Terra Iron Leaves. Iron Leaves has Psyblade, Leaf Blade, Mega Horn, and Swords Dance. Psyblade is a new signature psychic type move. Its damage is boosted in Electric Terrain. Before anyone can act, Iron Leaves will use Electric Terrain to activate its ability. From then, the AI works much in the same way as Walking Wake, so watch that video chapter if you need a refresher. Unlike Wake, this raid boss is very difficult. Electric Terrain makes Cyblade deal absurd damage. Swords Dance lets Leaf set up plus 6 attack in the blink of an eye. And Mega Horn is the perfect coverage move to punish you for taking a Dark type Pokemon hoping to gain immunity to Cyblade. However, I think the real difficulty to beat this raid comes from the lack of Pokemon with the right tools to counter this specific raid solo, and some are just not available in Scarlet and Violet. I've tested several builds. No matter what build you choose to go solo with, you're always somewhat at the mercy of RNG. You either need useful NPCs or you need Iron Leaves to not hurt you too much. That said, I'll show you one build, the one that felt most consistent, straightforward and least dependent on RNG. The Fire Ghost Starter Skeledurge. An unexpected pick, you might think. Skeledurge's hidden ability unaware ignores stat changes on the opponent for the purposes of calculating damage. 
it's as though Swords Dance has no effect. With this build you will need to terrestrialize and it doesn't matter which type, Fire or Ghost both work. Investing in defense rather than HP would be more optimal, but HP and special attack keeps your Skeletor more flexible for other raids. Quiet Nature is best, a speed IV lower than 24 is optimal, but don't worry too much about it. I'll explain in a bit why I picked this nature. Shell Bell is the only item choice. The strategy is as follows. First protect, then use Torch Song until Terra, then use the move matching your Terra type until Iron Leaves faints. Pretty simple. You slack off whenever you find it necessary. Keep in mind that Iron Leaves uses Side Blade out of turn once in a while, so you don't want to leave your HP hanging too low. You're probably wondering why Protect? There are three reasons to use Protect in the first turn. 1. Stall out one turn of Electric Terrain. While the terrain is active, Side Blade deals extra damage, and Skelly Dirge has no move to cancel that. 2. Avoid getting hit by Side Blade before the Defense Cheer is in effect as you could take massive damage. 3. Stall out the first turn to allow the NPCs to use the Defense Cheer. Some NPCs might even use support moves, like Will-O-Wisp, and you'll make full use of that starting next turn. In short, Protect helps mitigate bad RNG. If you were to take Skelly Dirge online, you might instead use Defense Cheer yourself instead of Protect. The rest of the strategy is pretty straightforward. Now. The reason why Quiet Nature is important has to do with the moment the raid boss clears your stats and abilities. If you're the first to move, and your damage triggers this effect, Iron Leaves will reset your stats mid-turn and then follow up with a move while your unaware ability is suppressed for massive damage. You may still be able to tank it and survive, but it's a big hit. Even if you do faint, you can still finish the raid. Quiet Nature minimizes the chances that this will happen, even though NPC RNG can still factor into it a bit. And that's all for this video. I'm sure you'll have a much easier time beating these bosses now. My word, making a good counter for Iron Leaves was tiring, so here's hoping future raids will be more reasonable to build counters for. Hope you enjoyed the builds, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.